The Texas legislature will vote on thousands of bills every session. Often those debates can get overlooked even on critical legislation. That's why we've asked legislators to come to TPPF to talk about their bills to make sure you stay on top of the most important issues making their way through the Capitol. This is The Layout. I'm David Dunmoyer, Campaign Director for Better Tech for Tomorrow, and today I'm joined by Representative Giovanni Capriglione. Representative Capriglione, welcome back to the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you again for joining us. Um, and, you know, at this point, you may be the legislator that we've interviewed the most, so I'm not mm-hmm. sure if there's a prize that comes with it, but sure. at the very least, just know we're grateful to have you here, sir. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's awesome. Right. Well, so today we're going to talk about a really exciting bill, House Bill 2060, and this bill would establish an artificial intelligence advisory council to study the use of AI in state agencies. And I know, Representative, that you're aware that the legislature authorized the use of AI back in 2019, but we currently don't have a clear picture on how many AI systems are being used and how they're being used at the state level. So to start this conversation, can you tell us why you feel there's a need for Texas to study AI and investigate ways the state can responsibly leverage this technology in Texas? Sure thing. I mean, artificial intelligence, machine learning, using big data, uh, those concepts have been around for decades, right? Um, everything from um, autocorrect, maybe that people are using, or online mm-hmm. chats, chat bots. Um, but obviously, over the last few months, we've seen uh, the public's interest uh, skyrocket. Um, for the state, I think it's important to realize how it's being used today. Mm-hmm. Um, an inventory of how that's being, um, where it's where the software is, how much we're spending on it, mm-hmm. and what the value proposition is for it. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense, uh, you know, and especially as constituents, too, having an understanding of how, you know, our potential services that are provided might be influenced by that, too. And so this bill, House Bill 2060, gets at the core of this, right? So can you take us through how this bill would work then? Sure. Um, and, and again, this, this bill, what it's focused on is how the state uses artificial intelligence, but specifically in autonomous decision making. In other words, there are these situations where the state uses artificial intelligence to help make decisions, right? It acts as uh, uh, something to check or to provide guidance or reviews or recommendations. But what I want to know is where are those situations, which software is being used where there's no human mm-hmm. in, in that final decision making process? Um, we've had a lot of conversations, uh, as humans have over the last few decades, about how should you use it in, in weapons and in defense? How should you use it in fraud analysis? Uh, for me, it's, it's going to be critical for us to know what we have. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately how we grow what we have, right? I am a big fan of using artificial intelligence. I think for the state, it can provide a lot of efficiencies. Um, take, for instance, during COVID, right? We mm-hmm. had a situation where unemployment went through the roof. Yeah. We had a lot of people wanting to access their employment information or unemployment claims. Um, so we stood up several chatbots, right, in mm-hmm. order to be able to go and communicate with people, provide those answers. I think it's huge value in being yeah. able to use artificial intelligence. Um, but I also do think we have to be careful right. uh, when the human doesn't have the final say. Right. <clears throat> Absolutely. And I know we've talked about this before, too, but it's the idea of technology as a tool, right, and finding ways to harness that prudently. Um, and so to that point, to what you just laid out, um, what do you hope the goal would be once this bill is passed and you know how would it improve the live, lives of Texans? Yeah, so there's a few parts. One, get an inventory of what we have, see how it's being used. Um, but there's a second part of it, which is essentially during the interim to have a committee, a council mm-hmm. that we call it, that has ethicists, that has academics, that has legis- legislators and, and others, scientists and tech, who can start the work of a framework, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, we we know there's going to be issues, right? Uh, if you just look at chat GPT or even some of these uh, photo um, creation tools, digital mm-hmm. creation tools, audio creation tools, what are the issues related to copyright? Mm-hmm. What are the issues related to, you know, students using it in college, right, and creating essays with it? Um, what about issues related with sometimes it 
goes a little off the rails, mm -hmm. right? And is are some of the comments biased in some way or another? And so for me, ultimately what I hope is over the next year and a half or so, before the next session, all of us can work together, maybe work with other states mm -hmm. to come up, like I said, with the framework of here are, here are some, some, some rules of the road, if you will. Yeah. Well, and, and as a follow-up to that, you know, this bill specifically focuses on the state's use of AI and doesn't touch on the private sector. And I'm wondering if you can walk us through, you know, what's the thought process behind this specific uh, bill for the broader AI issue? Yeah, I mean, I think just just like we did for privacy, mm -hmm. we we focus on the the state and how it's handling uh, citizen data first. One, uh, because it's incredibly important, right, that we mm -hmm. take care of uh, our constituents, uh, our Texas constituents. Um, I also think that we have to allow the private the the private world, so to speak, to continue to work on innovation and technology to be able to go and compete with other countries, compete with other businesses. So I think they can st stay at the forefront, and we can't necessarily do that right now mm -hmm. by putting restrictions on those private businesses. At the same time, uh, we all have a stake in what our government does and what it says, and obviously it has incredible power to curtail everything from your liberty to your property, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's super important that we focus on the government. And obviously we have more control right. over that as well. Right, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously chat GPT and a lot of different forms of AI machine learning are just, I mean, they're all across the world in, in news headlines. So I imagine there's been um, some chatter around this bill. So what has the reception been so far amongst your constituents or other legislators? What, what are you hearing on this bill? Well, it's pretty interesting. I think people uh, readily go into, at least when I first talked to them, into three categories. One, this is amazing. It's going to save us a lot of money. It's going to provide incredible new discoveries and tools. I mean, it's being used in everything from finding new types of protein all the way to um, um, new programs, right? Mm -hmm. And and able to go and provide support for people who need it. So there's definitely uh, a lot of people who think it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, there's another group that, of course, is worried, right? Mm -hmm. Worried about it from the perspective of, is this going to replace many of us in our jobs and in our work? And you can see already... Um, where that that fear is probably merited to, mm -hmm. to some mm -hmm. extent but maybe it's like a tool right yeah. where it, it won't replace jobs or just make us more productive and, and more effective then there's a third group uh, which i think is just as important which is okay you take a natural language processor like chat gpt um, some of those comments again go through a lot of filters mm -hmm. uh, some of it was trained or learned behavior Maybe it's bias. Maybe it's prejudice. Maybe it's toxic. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's um, not accurate at all. Maybe it, you know, just because it learns something uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's quoting people directly or even has that information. Um, so I think people are mixed mm -hmm. right now on what they feel mm -hmm. about this. But the reality is, is we're going that way. Right. And, uh, yeah, Moore's law, right? Every 18 months, at least twice as uh, twice as good as it was before. So um, this is just going to keep growing. And in 10 years, I mean, it, it'll be everywhere. Right. <clears throat> well, and at the end of the day, too, a bill like this providing transparency on how things are currently at play. So all the folks and not just those three camps, but all camps can understand, too, you know, how the state is currently using it. Well, Representative, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. And for those watching, again, this is House Bill 2060. Um, please, if you're interested, you can find the bill online. Certainly worth reviewing. So thank you all for watching this episode of The Layout.